Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to have a match between Steel Blue and Yogg-Sothoth, and it's going to be on Trojan Hills. This map is a much more typical map. It's one that comes up a lot, so this be a bit less explanation to do. Both players start out north side, south side. As you can see, you generally either start out here or one of these two spots, usually either back here or up front. Both players choosing to go for the aggressive start, and they're both likely to go towards the center, probably going to take these expansions, well, going to fall back with a couple constructors back here to take this and these side expansions as well, though this is a much riskier take, but it will be done at some point. And from there, most the players will be trying to vie for the center control. Whoever gets that's going to have an advantage, but naturally there are side expansions which will be taken, so this one will be taken by the north, and the one over the west will be taken by the south player. They're in a good position to deal with it. So that's basically how it's going to go. It'll be a matter of who takes the center and, to a lesser extent, who takes these side expansions as alternate routes. We're well, seeing two different starts here. Yogstoth going for a shield bot start, while Steel Blue going for a cloaky bot start. Not at all surprising. Yogstoth going for two very early ban convicts. Not even scouting with dirtbags. Early convicts, that's it. That's all they're doing. And one scout's one Glaive scouting out for Steel Blue while Steel Blue just builds... Oh, never mind. Yeah, one Glaive scout and then conjures from there. The Steel Blue very quickly getting up their economy while Yogstoth, on the other hand... Like, okay, they went for Early Worker. Only the one. They switched their queue. Looks like the Bandits are being built up for a slightly later attack, though. They aren't being built up as a scout force. They look like they're being built up offensive or defensively for now. No, never mind. They are being used as scout. But Yogg-Soth going for a spread scout strategy, while Steel Blue, on the other hand, just scouting from east to west, checking the defensive position first, sees that Yogg-Soth is not there, and then checks the more aggressive position where Yogg-Soth is, in fact, situated. And Steel Blue, on the other hand, they're way ahead economically. I mean, they have just built up a massive economy. Despite the fact that Steel Blue started out with a worker, they are partly due to the solar collectors, and partly because... I think partly because they were building up units that entire time. They have built up a little bit slower, so Steel Blue actually is going to be at risk. Yogg-Soth does have a chance to come in, especially around the back door. There's there's one Lotus that's not covering enough. So there is a chance for Steel Blue to actually lose a lot of this economy that they just built up. Their economic advantage is tenuous, but it's not necessarily indefensible. First encounter between the two sides, and one of the convicts is threatened but not going to go down. Bandits take it out, although a second, well, no, the second glaive is not going to do much. Unfortunately, outside the shield, Steel Blue not paying attention as Bandits and Glaives fight over the north. That fight started right in the middle of the convicts. And one Glaive gets through. Glaives do heal automatically, and there, there is a defender, however, in range. So that Glaive cannot attack at this point. Not easily, however, and it is going to get rid of a radar before going down itself. Reduces Yogg-Sothoth's vision some, but... Oh, man, that was annoying. But it is going to be not really that big of a deal. There's nothing that Yogg-Sothoth wouldn't have seen that they won't see right now. Maybe a bit later, but not right now. The Steel Blue at this point has pretty effectively converted their economic advantage into military parity. Yogg-Sothoth, however, making sure that that rear expansion is not taken while taking their own, which is very good. Steel Blue instead going over to the east side of the map, taking the hill expansion, and moving forward to the center very aggressively, but this bandit could be a thorn in Steel Blue's side if they're not careful. I don't even think they're aware of it. No, they're not. The radar is is positioned just so. They have no idea. It's over here. This hill, this ridge right here, that's blocking line of sight. This ridge. So that's a big deal. And at the same time, we do see the bandits coming in for Yogg-Sothoth are going to do a little good, but they are going to scout out this eastern expansion. And now Yogg-Sothoth knows that Steel Blue is expanding towards the east rather than expanding straight forward. Or rather, straight back. They are expanding straight forward. Uh, that was a mistake. But they aren't stra expanding straight back as Yogg-Sothoth is, and as players typically do. Steel Blue is... Sure, they probably will continue this. There's no reason not to. They have no reason to stop because, well, Yogg-Sothoth could... Yogg-Sothoth could attack that, yes. But at this point, Yogg-Sothoth is much more focused on the main base. And Steel Blue putting some nice pressure on here while taking the expansions over to the eastern side of the map. Pretty naked expansions at that. Yogg-Sothoth could come along with some bandits along the eastern side and come up and hit those. 
But I don't think they're going to. I think they respect the commander's position too much. And honestly, I think they just respect the fact that there's a bunch of Rockos bearing down their door. That's a bit of a problem. I'm sure Yogg-Soth would rather not have to deal with that if they don't want... Well, they would rather not have to deal with that. Unfortunately for them, they do. Fortunately for them, though, they have bandits, which do pretty much counter Rockos. But the number of Rockos is getting dangerously large. And the number of bandits is remaining, unfortunately, static. So Yogg-Soth right now... Instead, going towards scouting, will be intercepted by this warrior here, and that bandit will likely... Go yeah, that bandit's going to not even have any chance. There was basically no chance for doing any harassment. Stopping some harassment from Steel Blue, but even then, Steel Blue is taking the territory. The only issue is this one expansion with a bandit, and that could probably be handled pretty quickly. I mean, at this point, I don't even think Steel Blue cares to move back that way. They have the eastern expansions, they have the middle expansions, they have the center of the map, They've taken the center with units, if nothing else, and that's the biggest thing to take it with. So I don't know why I'm hedging that with, if nothing else. They have taken the center of the map pretty convincingly. Yogstoth similarly taking the west side of the map, but considerably late. Steel Blue way ahead economically. I mean, the, that's kind of funny. Steel Blue has... Yeah, funny that he ex... Well, I'm not sure exactly what that's saying. Expands around the bandit. Yeah, expands around the bandit. That's exactly what Steel Blue is doing. They don't even want to deal with that. Surprisingly, I mean, two two glaives, that would be it. But no, instead they're going for everything but that location, and that's working out. They're putting enough pressure on Yoxdoth that they really don't have to worry about these naked expansions. Taking all these naked expansions, don't not even defending them. Steel Blue has no defenses around pretty much any of these, other than this one choke point. Even this bandit could actually wreak havoc if it went, and actually it will now. It would wreak havoc if it hit the main base. It would deal so much damage hitting the main base, and at this point, this Conjurer is going to go down. There's nothing to be said. That Conjurer is dead. The Bandit might just awaken entirely, go into the main base, start wrecking everything. It could. It could totally do that. Surprisingly, however, it is not doing so. Unsurprisingly, Steel Blue's Assault has somewhat slowed down. Switching to Sharpshooter, surprisingly not to Glaives. Well, they do have some Glaives, but they're not using the Glaives on the front lines to deal with the Rogues, which would do them a lot of good. But yeah, they are not doing so. Instead, trying to weave around these bandits and successfully weaving around the bandits, getting to the southern expansion, will lose a couple glaives in the process, and Yogstoth not moving back to defend this. Instead, I think they're trying to take the center, but that is a really bad time to do that. They're going to lose this. This backdoor expansion is down. Lotus is down. Metal Extractors are down. The commander coming in to try to deal with this. It might if Steel Blue doesn't retreat, but I think Steel Blue is going to take this. And I mean, the game entirely. They have a massive economic... They have almost three times the economy. They're getting rid of the energy in this area too, so the reclaim is going to be less useful. They did exactly what I said they should do in... Well, not they, but one should do when attacking a primary base last game, which advice Sacktoth gave me during the FPVOD stream that I did last week. And that's exactly what... Steel Blue has done ex everything right here, pretty much. I can't think of any major mistakes in that attack. That was a very well-executed attack. And at this point, Steel Blue with the pressure at the front alongside these naked expansions. Now, expansions just getting clothed in time. Right as the guests arrive, whipping whipping a shirt and pants on, and stopping itself from being embarrassed. That is exactly what Steel Blue did. That was, I mean, good use of radar there. Seeing the bandits coming in, building that exactly when it needed to be built. That was very well done. And the last Solar Collector going down as well. yogg is taking a lot of damage here. I don't... I don't think they're out for the count entirely, but I do think that there is a bit of a disadvantage. A massive disadvantage. Steel Blue's only weakness right now, I think, is unit choice. Size makes sense, but they're a little bit tricky to use, especially with the Felons. The Sharpshooter makes a lot of sense for the Felon. That's what you want with the Felon. Size, yeah, I can see why you'd go for those. I would personally go for Glaives, but I respect the Scythe. That is definitely a worthy choice. It's very hard to deal with, with for the Rogues. So nothing wrong with that. It's just... A little bit unusual, and the Rockos will get rid of the thugs without too much issue, along with the Scythe. The Scythe's actually doing all the work, really. The Rock is just applying a bit of pressure and forcing the Scythe to, or sorry, forcing the thugs to hold back some. Unfortunately for the Sharpshooter, the Dirtbag is coming in to try to scout them out, well, really to scout everything out. Yogstop just going for info. They want to know where those Scythes and Sharpshooters are. The Sharpshooter, if it kills this, will it kill the Felon? That dies! The Felon death, that's what the Sharpshooter was there for. It looks like it's going to escape as well, but that was why that was put there. That was exactly why that was put there. It succeeded in its mission. 
At this point though, Yogstoth is kind of threatening quite a lot with these dirt bags. The naked expansion is going to be hit hard by dirt bags. And the Glaive is coming in to defend, but Steel Blue, that's the one thing. Naked expansions are risky, and the dirt bags able to take out a couple metal extractors while Yogstoth expands along the western side of the map. Not quite able to take as much territory as Steel Blue has, and Steel Blue going around the back, just scouting out, losing a Glaive in the process, but gaining some information about where Yogstoth has set up. But at this point, yeah, Yogg-Soth and Steel Blue still free. They're still fairly even ec militarily. Economically, no, but militarily, yes. However, the gunship switch coming in from Steel Blue, the first rapier pops off the ground, and at this point, I think Steel Blue is going to be able to retake this. A Vandal will be forthcoming. I'm sure. No, Vandals aren't forthcoming. In fact, and Steel Blue going back to Glaives as well. So we're going to have Glaive versus Bandit right after a massive thug Rocco War. But that is zero K. As one of the nice things about Zero K is that all units are viable all the time because there's always some weakness that a unit has that can be exploited by another unit. Or by proper usage of a unit, but usually by another unit. And that is exact. I mean, like I said, proper usage sometimes when it comes to critical mass things like this. But yeah, there's... There is such a counter structure in place that it is always possible to make use of unit types. And at this point, Steel Blue coming back with the Glaives. Really taking the center completely. They did lose the expansion points, but that's probably fine. The Rapier's coming in along the sides while Steel Blue attacking. Looks like they're they're pressuring the main base. They're putting they're putting stuff in the way. So it's I mean, Yogstoth knows they have a lot of stuff to deal with. I don't think they're gonna have to deal with it immediately. No, they are! Steel Blue is in fact going for the assault. I don't agree with this. Not with that Stardust there. And Steel Blue wisely retreats once they realize that's a Stardust. What no, what are they doing? Well, they did wisely retreat, but it looks like something got a bit messed up with the unit's thinking. However, the Stardust is outranged by the Rockos, which makes sense. It is the building version of a warrior. But it still goes down, and that opens everything up. However, once again, another Felon up, and the Sharpshooter is nowhere to be found. Oh my, the Sharpshooter must have died. Yep, the Sharpshooter did indeed die to a dirt bag. From the looks of it. Yogg-Soth's commander, however... It is threatened, but the Faraday is doing a great job keeping it alive. The Faraday, however, having gone down, means Yogg-Soth's commander is pretty heavily threatened. And at this point, the economy is nowhere near healthy enough that it's going to be something they can get away with losing. And there it goes. The Scythe takes, with its own life lost, takes out the commander. Steel Blue taking a massive... Well even bigger economically. They've had an economic lead all game. It's more that there's really no defense over here other than that one Stardust. And the main base also has no defense. There is no question of what defense there is other than Static and maybe the Felons, but the Felons aren't going to be in the back lines. So there really is no back line defense anymore. That's probably the biggest loss from that commander. Steel Blue not yet taking advantage of that. They know that there is a Stardust there, and they know they need to keep something on Yogstoth's radar so that Yogstoth doesn't feel confident about moving out. So it looks like at this point they're moving back slightly, not entirely confident their contain can hold. And to that end I agree with them. But it looks like Yogstoth is also moving back and regrouping somewhat. Looking to be trying to bust out at this point. Steel Blue sending him some Zeus. Going for Zeus instead of Sharpshooters to deal with the Felons. Interesting choice. And the Rapier is going south. This should probably... Well, this might break Yogstoth. I was going to say this should probably break Yogstoth, but then I realized Yogstoth still has a decent army. They're going to go for one last assault before they pack it in, I'm sure. I don't see them just throwing in the towel quite yet. Because the game has been fairly even, and you know, there's a few weak points here and there. I think Yogstoth knows that if they come in strong, hitting, say, this area over here, over the east, if they break the center, which is actually viable, they do have the unit power to do that. It's just going to come down to whether and like what's used where. And they have the Vandals to help get rid of, but not completely destroy these. They have quite a few Vandals, though, so that's the thing. They have the unit count. It's really just a matter of where and when they place them. For both players, it's really down to unit usage at this point, not unit counter unit composition. The compositions are fairly healthy, although the Zeus might be being the only thing left. No, that's pretty healthy. Yeah, the Zeus are fine. So, overall, it is going to come down to unit usage, but it's only going to come down for that for about a minute. After that point, Steel Blue's going to have such a huge military advantage. Oh, they already kind of do. But I think they're going to have such a huge military advantage. It's not going to help. And this is why the Zeus are so useful. Because they drain the Felon shields like nothing else. They have 2,400 health. The Felons don't have all that much in the way of shields. 1,200 shields. 
which I think is like two damage per shield point. It's a little unclear exactly how much. Oh, 7 H 75 HP per shot. Each shot deals 108. So yeah, it's about 1.3 damage per shield point. So they can deal a grand total of about 2,000 damage with fully charged shields. So basically, one Zeus will drain a felon without dying. Not to mention when it hits. And with the extra damage EMP does, well, okay, not any more than it does a shield, but still, that's damage done to shields. Even if it's an extra damage, it's still damage done. Now, Yogsatoth once again remains contained. Steel Blue, however, not quite as advantageous in a position they had before. I mean, economically speaking, Yogsatoth is behind. Steel Blue is ahead. There's no doubt about that, but Steel Blue is also kind of... Not really in a position to totally break. Oh, never mind. What am I saying? Those are Valkyries, not Rapiers. Yeah, they're totally in a position to break now. This will probably be it. The Warrior drop here coming in along the sides. I'm not, I'm not surprised it's not coming in the back, getting rid of the Shield Butt Factory directly. Oh, never mind. It is doing what may be exactly that. Going along the southeast, at least. But that's... Why is it going along the southeast? Is it, is it trying to attack there? There's no expansion there. And, indeed, it is not dropping off there, it is continuing along. If it attacks the main base, hits the factory, that will stop all the units from coming in. Yogg'Soth, however, going to go for one last- this is the last fight. Yogg'Soth going in, although realizing there is a drop, chooses to move back instead. But that drop happens. Warriors come out, and that- ooh, that's a lot of damage being dealt right off the bat to the Warriors, not from them. However, the remaining Warriors should be able to get rid of the factory without too much issue. The Bandits- Bandits are countered by warriors, so by type, <laughs> bit of a problem. Thugs, not so much though. Thugs are an issue, but they will still go down. Oh, will it? No, that convict is protecting the thug very effectively, but not quite enough. The warrior is still able to get through. Will it be able to kill the factory? That's probably not its priority. Its priority is the caretakers, and no, it does not. The factory remains up, and at the same time, Yogg'Sadoth has to try to break through this front line. Doing so is going to be tricky though. The zoo's doing what they can, but this is where sharpshooters shine. They have range. They could kill that right now. Admittedly, so could a horde of glaives, but the glaives would probably die in the process. Sharpshooters, however, would not, and the sharpshooters were a very good idea. Steel Blue was wise to have done that in the, in the first fight. I'm a bit surprised they haven't built a couple more just to deal with these felons right now. Because that's basically the only thing carrying Yogstoth at this point. They lost those felons. A bunch of glaives or warriors could rush in, well, glaives primarily, could rush in and tear this apart. And at this point, we're getting in. Faraday stopping it. Somewhat. But the damage has been dealt. The warrior does not get stun locked completely. And now we'll start hitting that Faraday. Second. Oh no, Lotus coming in to support. But yeah, that Faraday is going to go down in about two volleys, I think. Okay, there we go. Now that Lotus there is going to be a problem. But even with that, I mean, that was a metal extractor down for. Oh. Good positioning on that warrior. Faraday blocking line of sight for the Lotus, and now the Lotus, okay, kills the warrior. Bit unfortunate, didn't target the Lotus, rather instead targeted the, man, if I had targeted that Lotus, this entire expansion would be dead right now. That is a weird AI behavior, I don't know why it did that. I'm pretty sure Steel Blue did not, I didn't see any target lines towards the workers, so I don't know why that happened, other than the AI. For some reason, prioritize workers over staying alive. It does that sometimes. A little annoying when it does. Zero case AI is not perfect, which is okay, I guess. But it's important to realize that sometimes it's not perfect, and if you have something you really, really want to kill, hit T. Or I think T is the default target. T should be the default target. But yeah, hit T, and then click on something. Or T, and then T, and then draw a box. And it'll target those things. Because that is really important. If you want something dead, you might have to do it yourself. But you can queue it. It's not a big deal. Or I can't so much queue it as... If it can't hit the target, then it will target something else automatically. So in that particular case, the Faraday would have blocked the Lotus as well. So it would have died first. Another Warrior drop coming in, and Steel Blue, they're kind of, they're not really losing too much ground. They're, it almost looks like it, but really it's one of the Yawks that's gaining some territory. But Steel Blue has so much overdrive, so much economy, so much military. They are going for Strider. I was about to say, where's the Strider? There's the Strider. The Dante is built up, and that is, if nothing else... I think that's what's going to be there to end the game. Not much else can really do it. There is the Aegis. There is this, the Shield Ball. Pretty much full on Shield Ball now. 
You have the Aegis, you have the Thugs, you have the Felons, plural, which is a bit of a big deal. And nice Zeus drop. Good positioning. Should get rid of most of this. I mean, the defenders are going to be a bit of a pain. But I think this could break. If it breaks the front, then yeah, I was about to say, the units could come in from here and just finish it off. Even if the Zeus dies, which it actually is looking... Yeah, it's going to die. Okay, well, it did. But yeah, the remaining units could come through. And the Dante going through the sides rather than the front lines. Leaving the front lines open, a very risky strategy. But it looks like... Oh, if there was a sharpshooter, this would pay off. Oh, there it is! Yes! There is a sharpshooter... Okay, I'm maybe cheering a bit too much. Yeah, like, good sharpshooter. I've been waiting to see a sharpshooter for a little while now because sharpshooters are the thing to use and Stulu has used them. Yogg-Soth, they have the chance. They're going to go for it. They're not going to go for it. They're going to retreat. Five felons, though, with even three sharpshooters, that's going to be a problem to deal with. And with the bandit support on top of that, that's going to be a real problem. And the dirtbags, too, they know that they're sharpshooters. There's no dirtbags. There are a few... Ravens right now. No dirtbags yet, but yeah, that Dante is a big deal. The front line, however, could be broken. Those bandits coming in are presenting a major problem. And that Asp is providing, well, between the Asp and the Felons just helping each other out. There's a lot of shield charge to go around. Those sharpshooters, one of them has been decloaked, however, is not been killed in the process. Did not get punished for that. And the front lines, the center's kind of been taken, but the western side is... Well, Steel Blue's just ripping that to shreds, tearing that down. However, that Dante's going to get bombed out and killed. But the front line might be going back to Steel Blue. The Dante does not quite go down. Rogues will... Will they finish it off? They should. Those Rogues are in position to do so. Yep, they're going to finish it off. The Rogues finish off the Dante. Dealt a bit of damage, though. Got rid of the hill expansions. That is a big deal. The Dante is a few shots away from dying. And one more shot... No, two more shots. If they hit. Which is not guaranteed. Yeah, there we go. Two more bombs. Got rid of the Dante. But a second one is... No, no, it's not forthcoming. Nope. Started out being used instead to push out more cloaky bots. However, the front line has been pushed back some. And the felons are moving back. Looks like the Aspis was killed at some point. Sharpshooters moving forward. And I think... I think at this point, Steel Blue is probably going to go for the final fight. They didn't... Yogstoth didn't break the front line. They lost the Western Expansion. They got rid of the Dante, which is good. But now the Sharpshooters are in position. Not a whole lot to help deal with that. The only downside being that Steel Blue really doesn't... Do they know where... No, they don't know where the Felons are. That's, that's the problem. They actually don't know where the Felons are. They're somewhere over here. They don't know where they are. Which is a thing that they actually kind of need to know, because if they don't know that, then they don't know what's going to happen. That's a big deal. And Raven's coming in... Tr well, is it going to matter too much? It does decloak a, a few of the sharpshooters, which unfortunately didn't happen quite the right time. So the Ravens can't get rid of the sharpshooters. Rapiers... And, oh wow, this is... Okay, so the southeast is gone. And it looks like we're going to see just Glaives to close this out. Steel Blue coming in with those. While hitting the main force, the felons have basically... Well, they've been retreated, but at this point, they're going to run out of charge. And now, I think at this point, it's going to be death. Yeah, the shield ball is going to be hit by the sharpshooters. If not the Zeus's, but probably the sharpshooters. The felons are in perfectly good health, but they have no shields. The sharpshooters will be able to finish them off. It's just a matter of whether or not they can see them, and I don't think they can. No, they can't. Or it's very close. They got one of them. Got two of them. Like at the rest of them? Oh, it's just getting against the wall. Those felons keep running away. They're faster than the Zeus. Like very slightly. You see the stats page. They have... I don't know. Zeus are actually slightly faster than... Never mind. Zeus must be just dodging, but that's really bizarre. Unfortunately, the sharpshooters have been spotted out. Are going to go down, but the Glaive's coming in here when the felon has no charge. Vandal's blocking is ineffective. And the Felon will go down. That is the last Felon. And with that down, that is going to be basically it. Steel Blue coming in on all sides with loads and loads of Glaives. Going for an Air Switch on top of that. They already had the Gunship Switch, though. They don't really need the Air Switch, but yeah, it looks like Yogg's is about to blow up. Or, no, never mind. Yep, there we go. I was right. I did see the Skull. My eyes were not playing tricks with me. I did, in fact, see that Skull. And that was, that was the game. Let's point out, wow, Steel Blue really accessed a lot of metal.
So it looks like that game was entirely decided by units lost. Like, Yogg-Soth lost one and a half times as many units, and otherwise... Metal produced? Yeah, Steel Blue just had... Steel Blue got more metal the entire game, had a massive economic advantage. Even if they excessed metal, it didn't matter. Because they had such a huge economic advantage. Like, they excessed... Just in terms of percentage of metal gathered, they excessed the 0.8. That... I don't even percentage so much, but just... Yeah, they... They excessed a little under 2% of their entire metal budget. So, it was basically irrelevant. Yeah, they produced a lot of units. They actually didn't produce so many units. Actually, it's more that they succeeded in keeping those units alive efficiently. Like, kill to lost is pretty telling. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And, I should know, this is kind of a long... Like, see how it is across the game, even in the last 10 minutes. And throughout the entire game, Steel Blue was ahead. Or below for units lost. So, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So, thank you all for watching. I probably change in what was the plan and the fact that this wasn't properly advertised because yeah I don't know what happened with zero K server that's really bizarre unprecedented as far as I know hopefully it will not happen again I I imagine there's just some maintenance going on it's really bizarre that it's happening though that doesn't happen anyway thank you all for watching once again and have a good night everyone.